Hello, my name is David Griffiths and I'm going to present our work Outcast, Outdoor Single Image Relighting with Cast Shadows. This work was done in collaboration with Tobias Ritchell and Julianne Philip. So have you ever taken a picture and the sun was just not in the quite right position? So for example here, the front facade of the castle is all in the shade. Instead, maybe you want to come back at a different time of day when the lighting is much more appropriate. Or alternatively, you want to be able to create a time lapse, but maybe you don't have all day to sit and wait for the sun to move naturally. This is the exact problem that we address in this paper. Given a single image, what we want to be able to do is relight that image under any arbitrary lighting condition. So as an overview, we present a method for outdoor single image relighting. We can achieve relighting under any arbitrary sun position and this is achieved through novel ray-based 3D module, which can be used to account for long-range cast shadows. We'll now look at some of the previous works. The current state of the art is by Philip et al. One of the key things that they use is a 3D proxy geometry, which is created using multi-view input. Once you have a 3D proxy geometry, given a sum position and a pixel, you can trace in 3D to see if that pixel intersects with any geometry and therefore determine if it's in the shadow or not. Using multiple images and multi-view stereo, a 3D model can be easily built, which allows for computation of shadow maps given a specific direction. Other methods such as self-supervised outdoor scene relighting instead just use a 2D image approach and whilst they can globally change the color of the image, there is no accurate modeling of the cast shadows in the synthesized images. We'll now briefly go through our method of addressing this problem. The first constraint we have is we do not want multiple uh, images, instead we want to achieve state-of-the-art quality relighting but with only a single image. However, we need a proxy geometry to be able to perform good quality car shadow modeling. In this work, we address the potential of using a monocular depth estimator to give us the coarse geometry that we require. However, there are three main problems with using monocular depth estimation. The first is how do we handle scale ambiguity? The second is how do we become robust to noisy approximate depths? And the third is how do we account for incomplete depth from single view? So for example, if we only see the front half of a tree, how do we infer that the tree actually extends beyond what we can see? So a pixel being cast through the back of the tree would be correctly identified as being in the shadow. We will now walk through an example of how we solve these problems using this input image here of a castle. So we want to synthesize a new image where the sun direction is in a different place from the input, original input image that we can see here. So the first thing that we do is pass our image through a monocular depth estimator, which gives us our depth map. Next, using a Sobel operator, we can compute the gradients of the depth image, which gives us our normals of that image. Given the normals and the light direction, we can then use the dot product of these two vectors to be able to determine the cosine maps of the images. These are really valuable as they tell us very easily whether we are being a certain pixel is self-occluded. So for example, if we have a light direction and we have the normal of some point on the surface, we know that these are pointing away from each other, 
then the light would not be able to pass through and it would be self-occluded. We now move on to the more challenging task of how do we model for cast shadows. So given a new light direction, what we want to do is determine for each pixel whether or not it's in the shadow. Our key observation here is that we can draw rays for any given pixels towards the light direction. And now we know that any useful information to determine whether or not this pixel is in the shadow lies along this ray. So we directly sample along this ray direction for a given pixel. Next, we take our depth map and we project it into a point cloud. We then take the corresponding ray, but in 3D. The key observation here now is that when the ratio between the points line on the 3D ray and the points line on the ray in the 2D depth map intersect, this means that we have crossed some sort of surface. So for example, here as we go through the turret, the samples in the depth map would be further away. Then as it goes round the turret, the samples would be closer to the camera and then go further away again. And this intersection indicates very strongly that you've crossed some kind of surface. So we project the samples directly onto the 3D line and take corresponding uh, measurements along both of these rays. Specifically, what we're interested in is the ratio between these two sets of measurements. So we take one, divide by the other, and pass through a steep and tanned H to see where these intersect. By evaluating this, we get a new set of features which encodes this information explicitly for us. We then take these features and project them back onto the image, where now for a given pixel, it has all of these features corresponding to it explicitly encoding all this information. Alternatively, we also sample along the RGB image. This now gives the network the ability to not only learn just geometric properties, but also radiometric properties. So for example, if it sees a tree-like texture, it can learn the kind of depth of the tree and learn that maybe a tree is roughly symmetrical, and it can use that information. We then do this for all of the pixels, giving us our new set of features for each individual pixel. For each of these now, we have the height and the width of the image, and then we have the points along the ray. This allows us to create a 3D volume, where the third dimension now is the points for a given pixel, the points along the ray to the light direction. Once we have this, we can then create this dense 3D volume which is now evaluating this for every single pixel in the image. Next, we also take the input image and the corresponding cosine map. And this gives all of the input to our cast shadow network, which given both of these inputs, predicts the shadow map for that given direction. We then repeat this whole method, but for a target position. So given the new direction, we take samples, compute the ratios, build the 3D volume, pass in our RGB image and the cosine, and this gives us now the target image shadow map. Now we have our source and our target shadow maps, but from only a single view input. Importantly, we can actually refine the source shadow map because the shadows are present in the RGB image. This is not the case of the target shadow map where we're trying to synthesize new uh, shadows. So we take the RGB input and the, just the source shadow map, and we pass this through a second refinement network which can give us much more accurate source shadow estimations. We now have a refined source shadow map and a target shadow map. Additionally, to be able to perform relighting, we want to pass the source and the target light directions into the network. To do this, we just compute a uh, direction map 
where each pixel RGB is just the vector position of the light direction. This process is also repeated for the target light direction. Next, we take the normal map. So that we can have an up vector for our computations, we ask the user to click on a point that's approximately on the ground plane here, which would be one of the green points. We then create a, a map for that as well, so the network can see which way is up. Additionally, we also provide a camera map. So here for each given pixel, it's just the vector towards the camera center. And this allows the network to easily encode 3D coordinates into its computations. Finally, we also pass in the input image of which we want to be relit. Once we have all of our inputs to the network, we then concatenate these and pass them through a final relighting network, which produces the target image. Here we see this compared with the input. Here is a schematic of that entire process, including the cost functions. For cost functions, we use a mean squared error between the target image and the ground truth target image, an EL pips to encourage sharpness, and also a small patch scan, which helps with high frequency textures. To train the network, we use the arc exteriors uh, scenes, which are synthetically generated scenes that can be accessed inside Blender. The way that we create the training data is we take random walks within these scenes. And for each camera position, we then take uh, multiple uh, renders under different sun positions. At training time now, we randomly sample two directions. We assign one to be the source and one to be the target. And then given a source, try and predict the target. And this allows us to have supervised training. We will now look at some of the results of our network. On the left most we have the input and the right three images are re using the process explained. Here we show another example of the Arc de Triomphe in France. If you look at the right hand image and see that the light can propagate inside the arch, this shows that we're not purely linear geometry, but there is also RGB understanding as well. Again, we show another example of Rothenburg in Germany. We compare our work to Philip et al and Yu et al. Notice how in this example, we have temporally consistent cast shadows under different lighting directions. Similarly, Philip et al also can produce these. However, we only require a single image as input. In contrast, Yu et al can relight the image, but there is no cast shadows. Here we show another example of this where you can see the cast shadows clearly from the trees. Again, Philip et al can achieve similar results, however, with multi-view input. And U et al fails to model any of the cast shadows. Next, we show a set of ablations justifying the use of our 3D volume. We present four ablations. 
The first is an image to image translation or pix to pix like image where we basically just take the input and have a unit architecture to produce the relit image. This would be our relighten network. The second is a 2D CNN where we predict intermediate shadow maps. However, we do this using a standard 2D CNN with Poolin. We also have a ray sampling approach where we build the 3D feature volume. However, we do not learn any features on top of this. We simply just look at whether these intersect or not. Finally, we have our method, which is the ray sampling volume, but also with a learnt component using the 3D CNN on top. Notice how the pix to pix like and 2D CNN do not capture the shadows under the bridge. The ray sampling approach can capture some shadows, however, it has no knowledge of the depth of the, of the bridge. So it, the bridge could, for example, be paper thin or it could be very thick. Whereas ours has learnt um, to also encode information about the depth of the bridge based on prior examples. Again, we show uh, the ablations on a, a data set with trees. You can see that, for example, here, the 2D CNN and the pix to pix like do not capture the car shadows of the trees. The ray sampling captures most of the shadow, but misses some of the harder, more long distance car shadows, whereas ours is the only one that effectively models all of the car shadow. We will present a demo of our relighting system in action. First, a user uploads the image and then clicks on the ground point so the camera can determine its position with respect to the image. Next, the user needs to input the source shadow direction. To do this, we show the predicted shadow map on the source map and ask the user to align this with the original input image shadows. Once these have been correctly identified, the user can now start the relighting process. The user can change the rotation and the elevation of the sun to relight the image under any arbitrary sun position that they choose. In the future, we would like to address some of the shortcomings of our work. Firstly, asking the user to input the source shadow direction is cumbersome and also automatable. Recent works, for example, have shown that source shadows can be estimated directly from the image using a neural network. Secondly, we would like to extend this to a mixture of light sources Currently, we assume one dominant sun direction. However, as light just sums linearly, we could imagine a system where we have lots of different lights. We would also like to include a shadow softness as a parameter, so you can also change how soft the shadow is for the relit image. This should be an easy extension as it can be included in the training data. Finally, we did not address out of scene geometry. The source image, for example, could have the shadow of a, some geometry that's not actually in the scene. In our training, we used view frost from Cullen so that no geometry could ever affect the scene and the synthetic scenes. However, this is actually unrealistic. Using things like shape from Shaden, one could actually infer out of scene geometry, which could then also be used to realistically relight the geometry within the, the view. Thanks for listening to the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me.